Hi, welcome to the first Connectome podcast. I'm Ben Thomas, the writer of the Connectome. And on each podcast, I'm going to be providing a breakdown of a hotly debated issue in neuroscience today, or talking with an actual researcher who works in this field. And so today we have with us a guy who is making all kinds of waves in the field of connectomics right now, Joshua Vogelstein, one of the lead researchers at the Open Connectome Project. You can go to their website at openconnecto.me and kind of see what they're up to. They're basically trying to make as much data on neural connectivity available to the public for free as they possibly can. And they actually have a pretty cool interface on the site. It's kind of like Google Maps, but for brains. You can zoom in and out and go through different layers and see the pathways that hook some neurons up to others. It's really cool, and I suggest you go try it out. But enough from me. Let's talk to Joshua Vogelstein. Hi, Joshua. It's Ben Thomas. How are you doing? So, uh, yeah, I uh, just wanted to talk to you about uh, the stuff that you're working on now and uh, sort of where you came from and where your efforts are headed right now and how other people can get involved. So um, to start, uh, I guess the first thing I wanted to ask is, um, so one of the things that I think is the most interesting about your work is that you work really closely with some other members of your family. Do you want to talk about that a little bit? Well, when I was finishing my PhD, my brother was a uh, faculty member at Johns Hopkins in the Department of Electrical and Computer Engineering on Applied Neuroscience. And I told him what I wanted to be doing, which was uh, developing new physical methodology to analyze neuroscience data. And he said, well, that's Applied Neuroscience. And I said, great, let's just get it. So it was as simple as that. That's really cool. That's great. In terms of working with my father, um, because I do a lot of applied statistical work, every once in a while he'll call me and say, hey, we have this problem and we don't know how to solve it. And so I'll swing by the lab and talk to them and either help them on code or draft some new stuff for them. That's really, so you guys actually are working together on a daily basis. That's really cool. So uh, tell me a little bit about uh, the Open Connectome project and how that got started and uh, sort of what the thinking behind doing it as an open project is. So the way it got started really is uh, I was talking to Clay Reed, a uh, professor at Harvard, um, and he was coming out with a new paper where they had done some high resolution electron microscopy on a large part of primary visual cortex and mouth. And they had something like 10 terabytes of data that they wanted um, to be made available to the public. And I had already become friends with a computer science professor at Hopkins named Randall Burns, who specializes in massive databases um, for, for science, massive scientific databases. And so when Clay told me he had this data, I said, well, if you give it to me, I'll make it online and make it available to everybody in the world, mm-hmm. which he thought was great. Uh, and I called Randall and said, hey, can we actually do this? Because I just promised that we were going to. Um, and he said, well, how this is I said, 10 terabytes. And he said, well, that's too small. You have more data than that. And I said, I don't know, let me ask. And so it turned out the answer was no. But fortunately, it was still large enough for Randall to be interested in. And now we are working closely with Clay and other people to get much larger data sets on the order of hundreds of terabytes and hopefully petabytes shortly. Mm-hmm. Very cool. And uh, what types of things uh, are you guys gathering data on? You know, I, I've noticed that when I've gone to you guys' site, uh, there's data on a whole lot of different connectomes. There, are there any in particular that you guys are focusing on right now? So the, the data that we have is, uh, largely to some extent limited by the, by the experiments and the microscopes. So there's people around the world that have microscopes and developing newer and fancier ones to get high data. Um, to date, we have a couple um, data sets from mouse and a couple from C. elegans, and uh, we anticipate getting some fish in soon. Mm-hmm. And um, maybe some, some other mammals. Um, that's all using the electron microscopy data. There's a whole other side of connectome science, which is magnetic resonance imaging connectome people. And those people typically are imaging in humans in vivo, uh, being taxed and not in 
recently, and uh, a completely different kind of data set. So the, the resolution for the electron microscopy connectome data is on the order of cubic nanometers. The resolution for the MRI connectome data is on the order of cubic millimeters. Um, and instead of getting maybe one per animal uh, for, for like a year in the electron microscopy data, with humans, the experiment only takes several minutes. So I'm working closely in collaboration with Mike Milham uh, at the Child Mind Institute, who is gathering connectome data from thousands of people from around the world and uh, has started the, uh, what's it called, International Neuro, Neuro Imaging Data Sharing Initiative. So he, he launched that a few years ago. He's been collecting data and he's convinced a whole bunch of other researchers from around the world to contribute data both retrospectively and prospectively, so there's lots of data that's not yet available, uh, that hasn't yet been published that we make available. Um, and Mike has put the data out in a number of different places, and we're working closely with him now to automatically create a, a one-click one upload tool, which will automatically process all the data using state-of-the-art uh, pre-processing tools and then do multivariate physical analysis of the data. Very cool. That's very cool. Okay, um, that all makes sense. Um, a another question that's kind of related to that is uh, some people who are reading this, the blog might not necessarily know why it is so important to be imaging the connectomes of things like C. elegans or a mouse uh, on the level of detail that we are. What's the relevancy of these things to the human connectome? Well, so there's, uh, there's a number of ways that you all First, there's a prevailing belief within the neuroscience community that the details of connectivity within neural systems, scaling all the way down to the elegans and all the way up to humans, uh, imbue the, the organism with all of its computational capabilities. So um, there's a very general, interesting, basic science questions about what those connectivities are. Um, but there's also a whole bunch of other very practical um, reasons for wanting this data. There's lots of people who are trying to model, develop computer models to simulate neural activity, and mm -hmm. those models are essentially entirely unconstrained right now, mm -hmm. because we have no idea what the connectivity profiles look like in all of these neurons. So the, what happens currently is someone will record from maybe several or hundreds of neurons at once, and they observe that there's certain patterns of activity, and then we'll typically just try to make up the kinds of connections that lead to that, or perhaps learn it from the functional activity. But if you could know the rules that govern the probability of connections between these neurons, um, which requires essentially looking at it, measuring it, then all of these models would be much more constrained. So our explanations would be um, much more likely to be realistic. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. And what are some ways in which this data is being used in research projects right now? So right now, the, the raw data from the electron microscopy is um, largely non-annotated. The manual annotation of this data takes on the order of about one day per synapse or expert human. And so the 10 terabyte data set that we have from Davi Bach and Clary Lab has about a thousand to fifteen hundred neurons, which means about a million synapses. So it would take about a million days for for somebody to go through and manually annotate it, um, scaling up to a whole human brain is about hundred billion neurons and over a hundred trillion synapses. So that would be you know hundred trillion days of manual work. So one of the main efforts of the of the uh, Open Connectome Project is to develop uh, computational vision tools to automatically annotate the data and go through all of these, these volumetric images of the brain, find all of the neurons, find all the synapses, and see which neurons are connected to which. Um, and it turns out to be an extremely difficult computational vision test, partially mm -hmm. because the signal to noise ratio, while exceptionally good, is not. Uh, good enough to resolve all the ambiguities, and partially because the data scale is so large, typical computer vision problems operate on like one 2D image, 
and this is one three and it is tens of terabytes or hundreds of terabytes. Mm -hmm. So mo mostly right now, you guys are trying to get more annotations uh, from professionals. Is that kind of st the stage that you're at? So the parallel, we're doing two things. One is building up more manual annotations. And the other is we're building up more algorithms, hopefully, to be able to do that, the annotating totally automatically. Okay, makes sense. There's a number of efforts from other groups developing um, partial solutions. So there's a lot of That makes sense. So rather than trying to build up the picture of a whole connectome at once necessarily, for something as, as complex as a mouse or a human, certainly, we, we, you guys are, it sounds like you guys are looking more at particular regions, first of all, and then, and then hopefully developing algorithms that will be able to fit those regions together. Is that kind of how it works? Yeah, I mean, mm -hmm. the region, start with the, the easy to find neurons and the easy to find connections, and then, mm -hmm. you know, it's the harder to find one. Sure, that makes sense. Uh, and then speaking of uh, being able to fit those those different uh, pictures of research together, one of the coolest things about your guys' website, uh, openconnecto.me, or openconnecto.me, is that you guys have uh, freely available data where anyone can go and look at the, a lot of the, the mapping projects that you guys are doing. Uh, what are some of the things that people can go on your website right now and see that are pretty cool? Yeah, so that was, that was really cool. That's all enabled by my friend Alfred Cardona wrote this. Very cool. And uh, it, also along those lines, if there, if somebody, you know, like me, for instance, wants to help you guys out and is enthusiastic about seeing more of these connectomes be mapped on a larger scale, what are some ways that people can pitch in and help right now? Um, well, the, uh, the two bottlenecks for us right now are the manual annotation and then developing the computer. So to, to facilitate getting more help from the computer vision community, we've also built the a RESTful interface to a volumetric representation of the data such that anybody from machine learning or computer vision world can go in and using a pretty simple API can download an arbitrary volume of the data which is designed specifically for them to be able to develop machine learning algorithms on and then upload the annotations back to our server and then download the next chunk. Mm. That's very cool. I, that's really cool. Okay. Um, well, that's uh, pretty much all the questions I had for you. Are there any other things you wanted to add or talk about? Well, that's good. Awesome. So thank you, Joshua, for joining us on the first ever Connectome podcast. Just want to remind you guys again, the Open Connectome Project's website is openconnecto.me. You can go there and zoom around in all kinds of animals' nervous systems for free. They make all their data available to the public. And like Joshua said, they're always looking for more people to come and poke around and look at what they're doing. I also want to thank all of you guys, the audience, for joining me for the first Connect Dome podcast. And I look forward to talking to you guys some more next time. When we'll be talking about consciousness and dreams and nerves. Until then, have a great week, everybody. Go do some science.